You know, you can keep, you can go all the way up to Come on, you can start those candles. Let's get started right away. Now, Jesus, we thank you for your presence. Father, we love you because you first loved us. Shake somebody by the hand and say, do you feel this tremble? I'm not going to hang with you longer than it takes to finish. I want to talk to you about making sense out of pain. Amen. You know, how many of you have been in pain? Amen. You ever went to school? Amen. You know, they have these, they have trials every Friday. It's called a test. There's a difference between tests and temptations. So don't, don't think that the temptation is a trial. It's not a test. You're being tempted just to see if you're going to sin. We only get tempted by what's in us. When we want something that we ought not have, that's what Satan comes to tempt us with. So don't think God is putting you through a trial and that God is testing you. No, if you're being tempted, as you. You want that. Come on, help me. You know, the Bible says every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. So don't, when you get tempted, don't, don't lie and say you're being tested. Don't, don't trick yourself. Amen. You know, you're being tempted. You're, you're, you're lusting. You know, something you want is now before you. Like you can't steal money from the bank until you go in there. Amen. You know you don't have an account, but why are you walking in the bank with a mask on? Right? You got Come on. So in the Bible said, there is no temptation but such as common to man, but God is faithful who will give you a way of escape. Yes. So I even titled my message today, and women just understand you came out of man. The man you could have been. <laughs> Come on, think about it. When you go to heaven, you ain't going to be, you know, acting like a woman talking about, please, somebody open the door for me. <laughs> Go to Isaiah chapter 23, verse number 4. If you got your Bibles, I hope you can turn them there. I might not preach as fast as I did in Bergenview. <laughs> but I want to get this into you and I. Be thou ashamed, O Zidon, for the sea hath spoken, even the strength of the sea, saying, I travail not, nor bring forth children, neither do I nourish up young men, nor bring up virgins. He said, travail, you know, he said, be ashamed. Now listen to me, I'm not talking in the natural here, don't worry. So if you haven't had any biological children, don't act like Mary and don't act like Elizabeth, you, you, know, you know, don't act like you're all barren and, you know, and cursed by God. Don't act like that. It says, be thou ashamed, and I'm going to cut down, say, you know, saying, I travail not, nor bring forth children. See, it's a shame when you don't have the adequate pain in your life that you can enjoy life. Jesus. Jesus. When you have adequate pain, Jesus. a good day feels good. Jesus. When life is just the way you want it, you don't appreciate anything. He said, be ashamed because you never travail. You never brought forth children. Come on. As Christians, the key to our success is pain. Not pleasure, like the gospel people are preaching now. God's going to bless you with 47 cars, three, three oil wells to gas them up. You don't have to feed your children, just tell them to fast. Because you need more money for your clothes. No, that's not, that's not pleasing to God. What pleases God is when you can magnify him in the midst of your trial. Most believers can quit. It's easy to quit. Yeah. Just, just listen to Satan just a little bit longer. Right. You ever heard this worldly saying, you know, I fell out of love? You never was in love in the first place. Right. Amen. And you just allow selfishness to get a hold of you. Right. I just don't feel it anymore. What, 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 you need your hands on everything? <laughs> right. right. Well, how about Christian's excuses? I feel led. Yeah. Get a pencil. <laughs> 
<laughs> Just playing number two pencil in everybody's hand. Go ahead. You feel it? You feel that? Go ahead. <laughs> We got to understand when pain and trouble and trials and hurts hit our lives, it's our time to show who we are. Yes. Yes. Trials come to see if you're genuine or you're fake. Yes, Lord. And pain is a very good trying agent. Yes. You remember the 60s when they had nappy hair? <laughs> they had a straightening comb and it was painful for that hair. You were here. <laughs> the word of God is a straightening comb. Yes. Yes. Unless the preacher wants money, <laughs> he'll stay away from pain. He ain't going to tell you you're, 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 you're close to going to hell. He's going to say, God's going to bless you. Ooh, you got paid Friday. Oh, God's going to bless you real good. But I'm here to tell you the truth. Magnify God in the midst of your pain. Yes. And you'll bear fruit. Amen. Amen. No pain, no gain. You ever seen, um, you ever been in a hospital, ever heard of hospitals? Yes. I remember my wife, she was having Sydney, and you know, um, she had pain. I would watch the machine ascend and descend. And I'd tell her, it's getting ready to come. She'd look at me like, you for real? <laughs> I was just watching the pain, but she was experiencing the pain. Right. Screaming and hollering, all she did was as soon as that little girl came out, she didn't scream no more. Amen. Amen. See, what happens is you're running from the pain that's going to bring the necessary birth. Yes. 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 Being broke causes you to pray. Yes, God. Amen. Amen. Not saying that nice not saying that you need to be broke to pray, but some of you are just broke. Just keep praying. <laughs> because if you if you use poverty the right way, God can bless them that don't never hear don't never that's not bad. That's bad English. Don't never that's double negative, right? <laughs> them that do not hear him. Because the Bible said this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and delivered him. Amen. You see, and it says, magnify the Lord, and the poor will hear it. Yes. See, if you begin to glorify God in your pain, the people that can't handle it will have courage. Amen. I'll buy three hand claps for two dollars. But it says, be ashamed if you don't have pain in your life, because you don't know what's going to happen. Them that are at ease will be caught off guard. Jesus. Come on. Can you imagine just, you know, you're pregnant 14 months? And, you, and, and before you know it, the baby just start coming. I'd be like, hey, what happened? It just came out? Why? Why? God gave you a little shot. And it went, oh! oh. <laughs> Honey! Right? Preparation. This pain is preparing you for deliveries. Yes, God. Whether it's a better character or a manifestation of what you really need. Amen. You don't like pain, but you were born into this world. Yes. All right. Amen. Amen. Ecclesiastes 2.26. Go ahead, please. I bought you my clock. Don't worry. You know how they say in the commercial, got milk? Look at somebody say, got pain? Got pain. Got pain. Got pain. Got pain. Yes. One of the greatest pain stories was Jacob. He didn't ask to be a supplanter. It was just his name. And his mother was the one that told him to trick his father. And then his brother said, I'm going to kill you for that. That's right. He never wanted um, Judah and Issachar and all of those kid children. He didn't want none of them. He just wanted Joseph from What's her name? Rachel. He didn't, he didn't ask, he did not ask for his life. Come on, I'm trying to talk to six of y'all. You know, you're gonna put your medical your medication down. You didn't ask for this life. Amen. You didn't write your destiny. You didn't tell your mother I want to be born. You didn't even tell God. But it's the cards that were dealt to you because you could handle it. Amen. But if you fold, oh, y'all don't play cards. You ever heard of cards? If you fold them up and throw them in, you'll never get the chips. 
God allowed this hand to be dealt to you because you can handle it because of what's coming down the pike. Your life's not an accident, even though your body and your mind wants you to think that. Well, things don't line up, and no one, so what? You line up. Amen. You ever seen good kids in school? You know what they do? Those are the ones that get online. Don't they? So you better line up in God. Be a good kid in God's school. Amen. Ecclesiastes 2.26. Amen. For God giveth to a man that is good in his sight, wisdom, knowledge, and joy. But to the sinner, he giveth travail to gather and to heap up that he may give to him that is good before God. Right. Now, we take that to mean this. People put money in their bank because <laughs> they're scared. You're not putting money in the bank because you can't hold it in your house. <laughs> You put money in your bank because they got locks. And you don't want people to come in your house and take your money. But you're always working to make more money. You're always travailing. It says God gives sinners travail to heap up, to just get all this money and all this money so they can put it in the bank so that when God needs to make the transfer, he can make it to the righteous. Amen. Only three of y'all said amen because the rest of y'all must be them sinners putting that money in the bank. I got my money in the bank, but it's not from Travel. It's because I like the way that I can use it electronically. Amen. Send money to people, I just punch buttons. But I ain't coming to see people all the time. Y'all should have said amen. amen. But it gives Travel to the sinner to heap up and to gather. Go real quick. Matthew 13, 20. How many ever read the word of God? Amen. Let me just go back. You'll go there. Matthew 20. I mean, Matthew 13, verse 20. I mean, let me finish this. When you're dealing with Jacob, he didn't ask for that. His mother set, his, his mother set him up. His brother Esau said, I'm gonna, you know, I'm going to kill you. He went. Had to make a promise to God. God fulfilled the promise. Then he finally gets his Joseph. And guess what happens to Joseph? They tell him he's dead. And Jacob says, that's it. It's too much for me to handle. He had all those other children, but he said, this is it. I'm going down to the grave in sorrow. He stayed depressed for all those years while Joseph went through his trial. Come on. Amen. Who is having a bad day because of you? What trial are you not finishing so you can get out and help that person that's been waiting on you to be their deliverer? Amen. 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 You're licking your wounds, asking for more help. Your help is in you. Amen. And when you come out, just like Peter, because Peter he was the only one Jesus really had an issue with, he said, Peter, you're going to have to get converted. I'm going to save you, but you still need some conversions. He said, when thou art converted, strengthen your brothers. Some of you came out of the world. You're the best Christian possible. You didn't grow up in church. It's the church people that need work. Yeah, because they, they, they so used to it, they don't even know what they're missing. But you came out of hell. You got smoke all on you. You got, a, you got a mark on your leg saying Satan's kid. You can handle all kind of trials, but you, you refuse to go through them. When you're in the world, somebody can shoot you, and you'd be like, it's all right. Now you say, if you got a headache, oh, I'm dying. The devil put a migraine on me. Get me seven boxes of my doll, Advil, Weevil, everything. Devil's trying to kill me. Before we were in the world, you can go to a club and the music's on 25 and you're like this. <laughs> now you go to church, they stand too long. Come on. Amen. You, you don't give any credit to the God that delivered you. He brought you out of hell. He didn't catch you out of the world. You, was, you were hell bound. 
You were sending as many people to hell as possible. Especially some of you non-ugly people. Nobody caught that one. Fornicating like it was a sport. <laughs> Sending people to hell. <laughs> Come on, help me. <laughs> but now you're sending people to heaven. Yes. The pain. Yes. You know why mothers like their children? They carried them, they had to share their body with them. That baby was kicking them. And you know what? I love the way God did it. You know, the mother, the baby gets the food first, even though the mother's greedy. <laughs> she thinks she's hungry. <laughs> baby come out, she be all, oh. We don't, uh. The baby got his. He don't come out overweight. You the one that overdid it. Baby was done. <laughs> Even when you go to other countries, you ever see people starving, the baby still grows. I usually don't lie. She said it's true. It's amazing. God cares about that. He cares about what's to be born. So what you're going through is what he really cares about. You're worried about, oh, does anybody care? God looking at you like, yeah, I care. That's why I'm having you go through that. I can't afford to leave you the way you are. You need this trial. Can you imagine? Come over here, Edward. How old are you? You 16? She's 16. Can you imagine, Edward? I'm in the third grade. I never had a test to get out. Think of it. Edward, why are you still in third grade? Nobody ever tested me. Edward, you're 16. I never had a test. I couldn't get out of third grade. I'm a little bit big for my seat, but if they don't give me a test, I can't get out. Come on. If you don't get a test, you can't get out. That's right. And just like every other school, the teacher is always quiet during the test. God, why aren't you speaking to me? Because I put you in that hole for a reason. Learn how to work your way out the hole. There's nothing that you don't know already. I mean, I have, what's, what's my daughter? How old is she? She's eight. Sydney's at the age now where she likes when I'm not around. <laughs> when she was small, daddy, come in. Daddy, come in. Now, man, she know I got three remote controls. She know I use each one of them. She like, she go like this. Soon as I leave. <laughs> Sydney, you want to go with me? Mm, no. <laughs> when she was little, yeah, ain't nothing happening in here. That's how it is with all of us. God's going to be quiet. And you're going to yell all you want. <laughs> Everybody been yelling. He ain't been moved by one yeller yet. Yes, sir. Uh, amen. That's right. Come on. Amen. Jesus, you know, Jesus got out of hell because the scripture said, Thou will not leave my soul in hell. Yeah. It wasn't in hell saying, Get me out of here. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> Jesus wasn't on the cross saying, Get me off of here. Right. Amen. Here you are. You got a little problem. Get, oh, God. I have no friends. I have no money. I got more food. <laughs> Come on. It's the devil. You're uncomfortable, but he makes you eat. Yes, yes, Amen. That's when you know you're close to the devil when food becomes your ally. All right. yeah. Who's your best friend? Twinkie? <laughs> what, what block he live on? Well, he don't live on a block. He live on his shelf. <laughs> Trouble wants to be fed. Yes. Yes. Come on, help me. Yes. Where am I at? Matthew 13, 20. You ready? This is Jesus talking about the word of God. Anybody ever heard the word of God? Yes. Amen. The word of God, when it, when, like, when it comes into your life, and this is what you have to understand, Jesus is the word of God. Now, yes. I need somebody real small. I don't have anybody small. I mean real small. Imagine this, somebody small, right? Oh, he's not small. He's just not as tall as me. Come over here, Deacon Edwin. He's hiding over there. 
He is nowhere small. Yeah. Now, come up here in this step. Come up here. Now, imagine this. Say he was the word of God, right? Mm -hmm. And he would just, in, and he would come into me. Yes. There you go. <laughs> oh, he just. <laughs> do something else. I mean, I ain't, I'm not Mike. I can't do this thing. All right, all right. <laughs> Let me turn to that seat. <laughs> Here's the point. All right. Sandman. When the word of God comes into you, he is Jesus. He's not a thought. He's not a philosophy. He's not a way of life. He is the way. And he is the life. So he does not come to give you suggestions. <laughs> he comes to take over. He said, I, he said, I can't share this body with you. Make a choice. Get saved or go to hell. <laughs> and when he comes, and so when, whenever the word of God comes into you, your heart makes four decisions on how it's going to respond to it. Many people respond to the word of God as if it's an option. Yeah. It's not final authority in every believer's life. Yeah, right. 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 Come on. Amen. That's why you have people that when the troubles come, they can go take a drink. Yeah. <laughs> come on. When, there, when there's a fight, they can swing again first. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Think about it. Because the word of God is not first. They're not going to hear God's voice first. When I wake up in the morning, I, I hear God's voice, voice first, and I move before my wife don't see me. So I want to hear her voice. You ever have somebody wake you up that you don't want to hear? I'm not saying that she has a bad voice, but I, I, I like God to wake me up. Come on. I don't want somebody else waking me up. I like him. I like the sound of his voice. I mean, I'm, I'm just a regular pastor, but I, sometimes I don't like hearing your voice. You ever have people touch you? Don't touch me. I don't like